Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Back in our Father's Word, chapter 4, the great book of Jeremiah. We're going to pick it up in verse 17 in a moment. What, what is our Father saying here? He's saying, don't push me, don't tempt me. I'm going to send you or allow you to gather in false witnesses, false preachers, false shepherds, false witnesses, and... Um, even down to ultimately, even I will send Satan and his fallen angels. And then he goes in and he said, don't consider this a threat, but I've destroyed this earth once before. Don't push me, I'll do it again. I'm going to document to you today that that definitely was not speaking of Noah's flood. So having said that, let's pick it up if we may. Chapter 4, the great book of Jeremiah, He whom God launches forth, verse 17. Our father is still not happy with world situation, the world situation at that time or, or uh, any time people drift away from the plan of God. So verse 17, that word of wisdom from our father, and it reads, As keepers of the field, who, who are keepers of the field? Shepherds. Okay. Are they against her roundabout because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord? Speaking of Jerusalem, okay? Verse 18, thy way and thy doings have procured those, these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness because it is bitter, because it reacheth unto thine heart. In other words, um, it, it, that direction of deception has slipped in so bad that many people, they don't even know who they are, much less what deception is from truth because of so much false teaching, false shepherds, false, false preachers. It's real easy to tell the difference whether they teach God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse with explanation or whether they like to um, give you traditions of men. That's up, to, that's up to you to determine the difference. 19, Father says, my bowels, my bowels. In fact, from very inside, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. That seventh trump is going to come. It's going to sound. And that is the time that uh, the Savior returns. That's the second advent. In other words, there will come a time that God will be so put up with it, his wrath is poured out, that that seventh trump sounds, that seventh vial is poured, and 30, 20 rather, verse 20, destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled, and all my curtains in a moment. It just, uh, these tents, of course, are the, the tabernacles, even the little houses that claim to be God's houses. In one moment, the truth comes, and the truth is the Savior. The truth is uh, God's own Son, only begotten at the second advent. 21. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? How long will I do that? What is that standard again? It's Christ. Those that fly that Christian flag, that is that standard. It's very important to be under that standard. Because when you're under it, nothing offends. You don't have to worry about destruction. It's not going, God's not angry at you. He's angry at those that would allow themselves to be led astray. And here is where we come down to the point where he speaks of the first earth age and the destruction that transpired there. Verse 22, for my people is foolish. That, that means silly. They have not known me. 
They are sottish children. You know what this word sottish is? It's Anglo-Saxon from sod. It means stupid. They, they are absolutely stupid. I send them the letter. They won't read it. They'd rather play around with something else. And they have none understanding. Why? Because they don't read the letter. They are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. They just, they cannot seem to get it together. Well, how, how, what or why God would say something like that? Well, he sent you the letter telling you beforehand all things whereby you could quite simply understand the simplicity in which Christ taught, in which our Father relays it, and they won't, they won't uh, give to it. They'd rather listen to a bunch of ratchet jaws. And so it is. He has a right to say they're stupid. Because to throw away your salvation by deception, well, I thought we were all right. Oh, have you covered all of God's word? Do you know what pleases God, or have you listened to man? Have you checked that? It's all right to listen to man, but check him out in the Word of God. What God is building up to, and I'm going to tell you right coming out the gate here, he's going to tell you, don't push me. I was pushed once before. A third of my children followed Satan, and I wiped out the whole bunch. I destroyed it. So don't push me. Verse 23, he said, this, this is what I did. I beheld the earth. I looked at it. I could see it. And lo, it was without form and void. And the heavens, and they had no light. I destroyed the whole smash. It's called the Ketubo. And, um, and, and so it is, you know. This is not the way God created it. To, to say, um, when you say void and without form, that's tuhu vavuhu. It became that way. It was not created that way. Well, how did it become that way? God destroyed it. I, I, you're going to have it on the screen. Uh, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. Listen to it. Isaiah 45, verse 18, and it reads... For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth. Well, what shape was it in when he formed it? This is the beginning. And he made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, not in tuhu. He formed it to be inhabited. It was beautiful. I am the Lord, and there is none else. In other words, I put it together, it was perfect, and then along comes Satan uh, and uh, draws a third of my children away, and I destroyed that earth age that was. And many people say, well, I've never heard there was an earth age that was. Oh, well, here's living proof. There's a tooth that's many thousands of years old. It's a mammoth. It's from Texas. It was a legume eater. You can see the dental ivory right here where he would chew legume. That's to say grass, fada, and uh, was not a meat eater. And, uh, you know, we have filmed in mountaintops in New Mexico petrified palm trees petrified palm stumps. How did palm trees grow on a mountaintop in New Mexico? Because it, the earth was created to be inhabited. Naturally, those stumps are thousands and thousands of years old. You have the documentary for it in our file. And um, here we have from Alaska a dinosaur tooth, one tooth. Now, this is a meat eater, naturally, not a, not a legume chewer. This, this old boy could tear up whatever he wanted to with the, the teeth ripping and tearing because he had more than this one. And uh, certainly, that's from Alaska. That's thousands of years old. And then, <clears throat> to document to you that 
God and the angels in that first earth age were even on this earth, my crew with myself, we made this form from a stone that is thousands of years old. It is an angelic footprint. We are made in their image. Your footprint today would look much like this. Why? Because we're made in the exact same image. This is from the first earth age. The person, the reason this step took, it was a moisture place and he had stepped in a bit of a hole, tripped and caught himself with this foot. It would have been his left foot and, um, and uh, made the impression and later it solidified and turned to stone thousands and thousands of years ago. It was not made by a flesh man. It was from the first earth age. Now, many are going to say, you know, even today you can go to Ashfall, Nebraska. And before this event happened, he's talking about here, making it tuhu. You can find African animals right in the middle of Nebraska, right in the middle of America. Five different types of camel. You find rhinoceroses, some of them having fallen, you can still see the little one in the rib cage, the body that had not been born yet. The carnivores themselves never worked on these remains because of the ash that came from a volcano in, a, in Idaho that closed all the water holes and they would gather around what water was left and, and then fall upon each other from the ash, and, and that way we're covered. There you have all those animals from thousands of years ago, which makes it what? From the first earth age. That's why you have to understand, now what, what does Father say then? Uh, let's, let's continue and let's document that we're not talking about Noah's flood here. Okay, then we return to the fourth chapter of Jeremiah, and let's pick it up with verse 24. And verse 24 reads, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I shook it up. I destroyed it. The plates even crashed and moved apart. I beheld, I looked, and lo, there was no man. I destroyed every one of them from off the earth. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. There wasn't some little ark down there with, um, with eight souls aboard it plus two of every flesh. I destroyed all of it. So we're not talking about uh, every, all the birds even were destroyed of that time. Uh, there wasn't a raven to turn loose. And as Noah turned one loose, and he probably was feasting on the bodies that floated on the water from the flood, and didn't come back. And then he turned a little dove loose, and the dove brought back an olive branch. Do you know how long it takes to grow an olive tree up to where you get a branch off of it? You see, um, naturally Noah's flood didn't totally annihilate. It just flooded and then receded. So we're not talking about Noah's flood. We're talking about a katabo, <clears throat> an overthrow. <clears throat> and that's what God did. Um, he, he did it mightily. Verse 26. I beheld, I looked, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his furious anger. That wrath is going to be poured out again. Not to the extent, hopefully, it was at this time. But that's what he's saying. Don't mess with me. I did it once before. And he is going to do it again to a degree. Do you know where it's written? Even in the New Testament, you are warned about this. In the New Testament, when we go to Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12 records the same thing of what will be. And we pick it up with verse 26. You're going to have it on the screen. Hebrews 12, 26. Whose voice then shook the earth. 
But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And you can read of this naturally in Second Peter chapter 3, when he said, I'm not going to destroy it again as I did in the beginning with water. I'm, this time I'm going to do it with fire. Just, just the rudiments, just the elements that offend. The good I will leave, because I'm going to establish my kingdom there. Verse 27, and this word, yet once more, once more, there was a time before, of course, once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Where are you standing? If you're standing on the standard, if you're standing on Christ, you cannot be shaken. But if you're not on the true Christ, well, our whole church worships Christ. Which one? The one that's going to fly you away here before the true Christ returns? I hope not. Because that's the false Christ. Jesus made it very clear in Matthew, th Mark 13, in Matthew 24, that the false Christ comes first. How many preachers have you heard say, read Matthew 24 and say, oh, I want to be the first taken in ignorance because it's taken by Antichrist. 28 to continue. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, knowing. 29, for our God is a consuming fire. He, he can correct, he can put in order, and he's going to do it. His wrath shall come. And his wrath shall rebuild. Let's go with the next verse, please. Back in the fourth chapter of Jeremiah, verse 28, and it reads, For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, proposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. It is going to happen. 29, the whole city shall flee from the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb up onto the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken and not a man dwell therein. Not a Christian. He's going to make it rough on those that do not have that standard. Verse 30, and when thy art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face um, with painting like a harlot, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. You know, it's written in uh, Revelation chapter 17, that even old sister Babylon that whores after the false Christ and the rest of them, they hate her. They truly hate her and, and want to destroy her. You don't want to follow that mess, the offspring of Cain, the false teachings of this world. You want to be very careful. Our Father has forewarned us. Verse 31, for I have heard a voice of a woman in travail. What does that mean? We're about to have the birth of a new age. And the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion that bewaileth herself, that spreadeth her hand, saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is wearied because of murderers. Murderers who? Who was the first murderer? Cain was. False teaching. The devil is nothing but a thief, a murderer from the beginning. And he not only wants to murder your soul flesh, your flesh rather, but he wants your soul. He wants company. You don't want to go there, friend. And, and so it is. God is very, he's very plain. He said, if you don't want to follow my word, don't mess with me too much because I destroyed this mess once before. I did not leave one individual. Don't mess with me. And he means it. You want to you let him have your attention. 
The next chapter following this, if I were to give it a title, it would be Investigate. You investigate yourself, your beliefs, in relationship to the Word of God. You want to investigate real closely, chapter 5, and, and the nations of the world today. Chapter 5, we're, understand where we left that last chapter, the birth of a new age. It's coming, friend. Chapter 5 and verse 1, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if you can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. You, know, you investigate. Go, go, go see. Go see what's there. Verse 2. And though they say, the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Which Lord are they talking about? The true or the false? Obviously, it's false. Verse 3. O Lord... Are not thine eyes upon the truth? Of course they are. Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their eyes harder than a rock. That means they're so set in their ways you couldn't jar them with a stick of dynamite. They have refused to return. You know, many might say, well, how in the world could that be? It's real simple. They think what they're doing is right. I'm going to be the first one taken. I'm going to fly away. I don't have anything to worry about. I don't have to study God's Word. I'm in good shape. Oh, are you? Do you know that the false Christ comes first at the sixth trump? And you're not gathering back to Christ until the seventh? And people that are standing on the rock must make a stand against the false one, as it's written in Mark 13, right from Christ's mouth. You ready for it? Or do you understand? Our Father is not playing games. He's letting you know beforehand, as it is written, how it's going to happen. He wants you to investigate it. Think upon it. Analyze Again, investigate. Whatever it is you believe, does it, when you pull this investigation, does it align with God's word? Therefore, therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. They're silly. For they know not the way of the Lord nor the judgment of their God. They, they claim to be so religious and yet they, it's all coming down around them, and they cannot recognize it. Verse 5, I will get me into the great men, and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord, and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke, and burst the bounds. They, they, they have... Nothing to do with the true Father. Because they're deceived. If you're deceived, you think you're all right, then boom. But Father is always good to us. Listen carefully. Verse 6. Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them. Do you know who that old lion is? It's nothing but Babel, the king of Babylon himself. Satan. A wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Every one that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. Their revolts and they do it over and over and over. Do you realize how much was said in that verse? <clears throat> you know, you need to investigate. Who, the wolf of the evenings, who are we talking about here? Do you know what the evening is? It's neither, it's at the end of the day. That's the time element. But also, 
Do you, do, you, do you know what the word Arab means in the Hebrew tongue? It means neither of the day or the night. It's evening. It's dusk. Do you know what this word evenings is in the Hebrew manuscripts? It's Arab. -ah. The people of the desert, they're coming. You need to watch. Well, what is it that the wolf of the desert will do? The wolf of the desert shall spoil them. You know, we have many things happening in this world, and our Father always forewarns us. It is written, it shall come to pass as it is written. Are, are you awake? Are you observing? Have you watched the Euphrates? Do you understand what time it is? How precious it is that our Father, that these revolts continue over and over and over. He says, they will not listen to truth. Heaven, how shall I pardon thee for this question? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. I had fed them to the full. I gave them everything. They wouldn't pay any attention to me. They then committed adultery, that's idolatry, worshiping something they shouldn't, and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot houses, waiting for the great wedding with the false Christ. You see, he's, he's preparing a wedding also. He's coming to take a bride. I'm talking about the false Christ. Do, do you know, well, where is that in the scripture, brother? You'll have to document. Well, what do you think Christ was talking about in Mark 13 when he said, woe to those that are with child when I return? He, he wants a virgin bride. Do you know how you lose your virginity? We're speaking spiritually. He said, there will even be with child and nursing it along, which means they are in Satan's camp, in his church, worshiping a God that is no God, and even nursing along his work by turning in their own brothers and sisters that are of God's elect, as it is written in Mark 13, whereby the Holy Spirit can speak through them and the full truth come to the world again. That's where it's at. In other words, Jesus wants you to know how it feels if you are married and you've been gone for 2,000 years and you come back and your mate is either the father or the wife having a small child suckling, something's been going on. Well, that's what Christ wants you to know, that many are going to wed the false Messiah in a spiritual sense, a spiritual wedding. Do you think, um, with Christ returning, wanting a virgin bride, he's going to have anything to do with them? Of course not. Why? They're, they're, they haven't got their lap, lamps with oil full. Their lamps have gone out. They've been deceived. And what a shame, because many of them are good people that have been misled by false teaching. The wolves of the desert are coming. The wolves of the desert are having their day. The hours are ticking by. It's kind of a sad, sad situation when even in higher echelons it cannot be recognized. If anything, they aid the enemy. I will not push that further, but Satan is working overtime. And it is time that people wake up and realize God loves his children. But you've got to listen to him. You do not want to fall into that shameful, messy trap of worshiping the false Messiah. That's what uh, this idolatry is. And that's why, that's why Christ, he warned you in Mark 13. He said, if they tell you he's in the desert, if they tell you in the desert being aptly used. If they tell you he's here and they tell you there, don't you believe it. For it's not the Christ. 
But many will be deceived thinking it is when he can snap his fingers and lightning come down from heaven, performing miracles in the sight of people. They're going to go bonkers over him. Why? They haven't been taught. The Father has told us exactly how it goes down. And they won't listen. He says they're hard-headed. Their heads are like rocks. You need to hear the truth. How... What did I say I would, I would title this chapter? Investigate. Investigate for the sake of your own soul, the Word of God. Next verse, please. Verse 8. <clears throat> they were as fed horses in the morning, everyone neighing after his neighbor's wife. That's, um, that, in every natural way, they leave it. Verse 9. In other, in other words, um, he's talking about messing around with false teaching and the false Christ. You got it? Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord, and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Of course it will be. You know, when he gives us everything, when he gives us our freedom, so many blessings because we do worship and follow Christ. Then when people begin to shut themselves off from chapter by chapter and verse by verse, thus saith the Lord God, they lose their way. They don't exercise their minds in what really counts, the scriptures and teachings of the Lord himself. And they can drift so far away that they become foreigners instead of in the camp of the living God. Verse 10, Go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end, take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's, they're not mine. Revelation chapter 9, the false one's coming. Five months he will have. Are you ready for it? Are you ready to make war? What We do not war against uh, the power of arm, but principalities in high places. That's why you have that gospel armor on, and the gospel armor means so much when you align it with this teaching that when it's on and in place, you can stand against the fiery darts of Satan. And hey, I've read the back of the book. We win if you have the truth up here if you have it in your heart, in your mind, to listen to God's word, but heed the warnings, pay attention to current events. Watch. Watchman, watch. All right, bless your heart you. Listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. All right, there we are back again. Um, let's have the 800 number if we may. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, all over Canada. If the Spirit moves and you have a question, uh, you share it. Won't you do that? Please never ask a question about a particular reverend denomination or organization. We do not judge people. That's our father's business. And our father will always, he knows how to take care of business. Sometimes if you start judging, you're going to get in his way, and it's a terrible sin for a Christian to judge because you're getting on father's toes. You have the right to spiritually discern. That is a gift from God. Always use it. 
as to whether you are hearing truth or fiction. That's up to you. Those of you that listen by shortwave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you and your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Always a pleasure. Prayer request, don't need the number, don't need an address, why? God knows what you're thinking. Talk to him. Like you, you don't have to read some written prayer. Be honest and forward with him. Let him know how you feel, what you need, your love for him. That's what he wants from you because indeed he loves you. Father, around the globe we come, we ask that you need, guide, direct, Father, touch in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. <clears throat> All right. White Whitney from Oklahoma. Could you please tell me regarding the seals, trumps, and vials, is it in that order? First the seal broken, first trump, first vial, and so on. Thank you, and God bless you and your staff. No, it, it doesn't go that way. The seals are supposed to be placed into the mind of the children. That's God's elect. Before the first trump ever sounds. Those seals have been formulating. That's simply absorbing God's truth up here in your forehead. Revelation chapter 7 makes that very clear. An angel, a strong angel, appears and says, Stop! Don't let the four winds blow until the seals are in place. That means the truth. And many of us have been teaching that truth now, those seven seals, for many years. And then um, what happens then? Well, with this knowledge of the seals, you know what each trump brings. A trump always executes the command. On it goes. Then when the sixth trump sounds, really with the fifth, then the sixth trump begins to pour in, and it goes for quite a period of time. And then vial one, two, three, four, and so forth. In the last three woe trumps. That's why they're called woe trumps. They're woe trumps because the vials, the wrath of God, are poured out within those three trumps. Okay, and there you have it. Uh, Curtis from California. Where is the scripture that says God does not want preachers teaching his children to fly? You will find it in Ezekiel chapter 13. If you have, an in, if you have one of the newer NIVs, I'm sorry, they've changed it. You need to get the old King James and read what the real truth is, and I would throw the other away. Um, but if it reads as I'm about to tell you, the real King James will tell you, beginning with verse 18, uh, the daughters sew these kerchiefs to cover every knuckle in my outreach saving arms. That's God. He wants to save you, but false teaching will cover every knuckle where he can't reach you. Well, what are, what are they doing and what are they te teaching the souls to fly to save their souls? And God says, I'm against that. And he is. You see, it's not written. He's got work for us to do. And that work is to bring forth what the Holy Spirit would say through us against the false Christ as Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21. So stipulate. There you got it. Um, naturally, one of the, uh, so, some of the Bibles have changed that to read, and this is birds flying. Well, what does birds flying have to do with knuckles of God's saving arms being covered? Nothing, because the Kenites have changed it. You don't need a Bible like that. Uh, okay, we got Melissa from Kentucky. Melissa, when you, Satan knows your every weakness. And if you're one of God's elect, he's got most of the world. He wants you. And there's only one way you can handle that is to get tough with yourself. Because the first thing the Antichrist is going to do if he knows you're hooked on something is offer it to you to get your confidence, your weakness. You've got to get strong and you've got to get tough now. You get hold of your bootstraps, you pull yourself up. There, there is help. There is organizations that can help you check out to, and go to, to the, the organizations. Talk and um, 
that uh, will help you with that. You're one of God's elect. Get tough with yourself. Uh, God has business for you, and that is not part of it. Mary from Missouri, I've been watching your program for eight years. I see God's work much more clearly than I did in the previous 50 years. I thank God every day. Well, thank you for sharing that. If I understood you correctly, Satan was guarding the mercy seat in heaven. What was he guarding it against? Well, um, God had to give everyone free will to have true love. God can't force somebody to love him and have it be real love. For his very throne itself, in case somebody should get prideful and try to take it, which the mercy seat is basically his throne, then he had to do something about that. That's why he had him there. Unfortunately, he that rose to such a high position, Satan, king of Tyrus, Tyrus is rock in the Hebrew tongue, he wanted to sit on it himself. And in verse 18 and 19, he's going to be turned to ashes from within because of that. Nobody gets away with anything with our Father. There's only one way you can get away with something is through repentance and mean it. Was Goliath the offspring of fallen angels? Yes, he was a gibar. Vicki from Virginia, Deuteronomy 22, verses 25 and 26. Please explain. What it does, uh, Deuteronomy 22, 25, and 26 stipulates that rape, the penalty for rape is the same in verse 26 as it is for murder. So that's what it's talking about. There's no ifs, ands, or maybes, and that's if someone is taken totally by force and so forth. Uh, okay, um, Stormy from Mississippi. Hi, my name is Stormy. I'm nine years old from Mississippi. And I was wondering if someone was trying to shoot, should you defend yourself or should you let them shoot you? Uh, we have um, the right to defend ourselves uh, in, in this nation, and God gives us that right also. It's to protect yourself. And uh, you always have the right to check, to, to protect your life, your family, and your property. It's called self-defense. And it is the law in the majority. Uh, it is the law in Mississippi. And um, you live in a fantastic state, as, as many of the others, uh, where we have the right of self-defense and to protect what is ours. <clears throat> and uh, so it is. I, you know, um, Stormy, good question. Thanks for studying the Word of God. Uh, okay, we got Barbara from North Carolina. Pastor Murray speaks of knowing family members in heaven. Does that mean that we will also know friends and neighbors? Well, of course it does. If you, if you recognize your family, you're going to recognize other people that you know why because we are in the exact image we are created in the flesh in the exact image we were when we were with the father there is one difference that in the flesh we age in the spiritual body you do not age has nothing to do with a spiritual body <clears throat> bob from illinois why would the antichrist do what he's doing of what he's going to do if he knows he's going to lose anyway. Well, he doesn't think he is. You know, do you not understand pride? He, he thinks he's better than God. And you know something? Who is most successful right today in converting souls, God or Satan? Okay. I'll ask that in a little different way. Who controls the most people in this world today, God or Satan? Satan's winning. That's why it's written in Revelation, the whole world whores after the false Christ. That's all but God's elect. And those that convert and know the truth that the false one's coming first. So, you see, he's got a lot going for him. And he thinks that through the God of force, they can overcome. Daniel chapter 
uh, 11 will document the God of force for you and his way of thinking. Okay, Will, Willa from Florida, can you, and thank you for your comment. First, I love, I love you since you're teaching. The first time I watched you, I knew you were a Marine. I could tell by your mannerism, you are a great teacher. Well, thank you. Um, and uh, I am proud to be a Marine. There's no such thing as an ex-Marine. Once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine. Uh, and Ken, will you please tell me where the verse is that says something about little children running the country? Isaiah chapter 3, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 4. That'll get you there. And it is predicted and uh, kind of looking that way. Okay, this would be um, a preacher. I can't, I'm looking for a name and I don't see one. Maybe I'll come across it. Uh, a preacher at the job said that I am wrong for paying my tithes to TV ministries, that I'm supposed to support churches in my community. doesn't matter if I agree with the church or not. He quoted several verses out of the good book that he twisted to make him right. I still disagree, Pastor Murray, but I don't didn't debate, I, I don't debate the Bible. Please tell me your opinion. Well, you, you tithe where you're fed. That's only common sense. In other words, it keeps the word coming to you. And everybody loves the word. You know, where you would prove him in error if you knew it was a false teaching is the second epistle of John. You got three little epistles of John. The second one says, if you tithe, to someone that teaches something that you know is false, you become a partaker of their evil deeds. So it would be very wrong for you to do that. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't waste my time debating with him. You're, you uh, know the truth, and the truth's going to set you free. Uh, Charlena from West Virginia. Uh, this is a question for the pastor. You, you in the word, said Satan will become ashes from within. Does that mean his evil soul and evil spirit or what is destroyed? Everything. Uh, God would say <clears throat> in the 10th chapter of Matthew, fear, fear not those that can destroy or kill your flesh body, but rather fear he who can cause your soul to perish. And uh, Satan will no longer exist. He will be blotted out totally and completely. Uh, where it stipulates that he will be turned to ashes from within is the king of Tyrus, which is the false rock. And you will read that in Ezekiel 28, verses 18 and 19. Maria from Illinois. I am using an NIV Bible and have noticed that it is different than yours. Is this the wrong Bible to be using? Well, go over to go over to Ezekiel chapter 13. Pick it up with verse 18 and see if it's got birds flying or if it says God is against those that teaches people to fly to save their souls. If it doesn't say God is against those that um, teaches children to fly to save their souls, <clears throat> you got a you got a bad one. <clears throat> I'm I'm you know it's like everything else. Satan when he was tempted by Christ in the wilderness, he could quote more scripture than most Christians would even know or understand. But there's just one problem. It's like a Bible that somebody hankies with. If you're not a pretty good scholar, you don't catch it, so you don't know when you're being misled or not. And it's a terrible thing for someone to take away the fact that to teach rapture, that God's against it, as it's written in Ezekiel 13. For someone to change that, that's changing God's word. And that's a terrible sin. But um, uh, Satan would always use scripture, but he always tweaked it right at the end and turned it four, 90 degrees where it become a lie. And... Um, that, that's the way some of his children like to do also. So that's why you want to investigate, investigate. The tools that I suggest that you have gives you the ability to research for yourself 
whether someone is telling you the truth by giving you the original languages and giving you the ability to check them out. Doris from Michigan. <clears throat> is there only one Lord's Prayer? You know, most people mistake the Lord's Prayer as the prayer he told us how to pray. It wasn't the Lord's Prayer. I know it's called that, but it's in error. Jesus was asked, tell us how to pray. It's not his prayer, it's ours. Okay. The only, Christ's prayer you will read in St. John chapter 17. The entire chapter is the Lord's Prayer. It's the only one, basically, that uh, we can call the Lord's Prayer. He's praying to our Father. Beverly from Florida. There are passages in the Bible that talk about healing by the stripes of Jesus. We were healed. If we as Christians, we claim those promises and are not healed, does this mean that we are not good enough or we don't have enough faith? Well, Beverly, first of all, did you anoint yourself with the oil of our people as it is written in James chapter 5? Knowing and believing. And then... After you pray for healing, do you go by the health laws? Because if, if, you, if you eat scavengers, that's what makes you sick a lot of times. So, and then God is putting an army together in heaven and here on earth. And um, God's will be done, whatever it is. But it is written in James chapter 5, as well as with his stripes we are healed. And uh, certainly healing is a beautiful thing. Rhonda from West Virginia. Revelation chapter 20, verse 5, please explain. There will be a thousand-year reign, and God's elect will be priest for that thousand years, but the rest of the dead must remain dead until the end of the thousand years, which means what? It means anyone that doesn't overcome in these flesh bodies by accepting Christ and standing on that rock, then they are resurrected into spiritual bodies, but they still have mortal souls. It's a different kind of death than they are spiritually dead. <clears throat> and they will remain spiritually dead until Satan is released a short season at the close of that 20th chapter. And if they stand against him, then they may find immortal life. If they do not, their mortal souls will die in the lake of fire. They will be tested. God does not wish to have anyone in eternal heaven that has not been tested. So all it means in that verse 5 is they're going to have to be tested at the end after they're taught through the thousand years. If they make the stand, they'll probably be in good shape. Then they will become back spiritually alive. Um, you know, you might, if you ever study Greek, there's a difference in nikos and nikos, okay? It's, it's a different kind of deaths. Darla, from, it's not a corpse like we think of a corpse. They're spiritually dead. Darla from Oklahoma. If Adam and Eve were the first people on earth and they had Cain and Abel, how did the world populate? Well, they were not the first people. God created all the races on the sixth day, and he looked, and it was good. He rested the seventh, and then on the eighth day, he created Adam, a different man through which Christ would come. Um, this is um, Craigton from Nebraska. Is there any scripture in the Bible that relates to our government and people that hold office during the end times? Yep. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 4. They'll pretty well fix that up for you. It can, you have to figure it out, okay? Isaiah chapter 3, verse 4. Sandy from Washington. When God said, let us make man in our image, could God have meant him and Jesus and the angels? Also, remember, some of us watches are not as knowledgeable as you, so please be patient with our sometimes silly-sounding questions. Well, it's not silly-sounding. No, when, when God made that statement, let us create man in our, that's plural, image, 
he was talking to El, the Elohim, that's God and his children. So naturally, he created them in the exact appearance that they were in heaven, and here they are, okay? You look here like you looked in heaven, and, and um, barring accidents in life and so on and so forth. So uh, that's exactly how it is. That's why we will know each other in spiritual bodies. They look the same. The bodies are so near alike that that's why manna would sustain our ancestors in the wilderness as they wandered there 40 years. Because that was angels' food. And that that sustains the angels will also sustain us. Why? Because we're just alike, except one is spiritual and the other is flesh. The spiritual's got the far the better deal, okay? But we, that's our all our real home, not this one. Uh, Doreen from Washington, my question. My family plants a garden every year, and we have wondered, in order to give God the first fruits, how do we give these fruits to God? Well, it, it, God bless you for growing a home garden, fresh vegetables and so forth. But sometimes to share with someone, you know, it, it is a custom and a tradition that when, when you have overproduction, you share with somebody that's needy. And uh, certainly that's sharing the first fruits with the Father. And I'm out of time. That's your own choice. You can can it and for even hard times and for other times uh, in God's name. I'm out of time. I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word. Most of all, God loves you for it. Hey. It's the letter he sent to you to inform you so that you're not deceived. He does not wish you to be deceived by he loves you. You make his day, boy, will he make yours. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we have helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, you bless God, he will always bless you. That's just the way he operates. Most important, though, you listen to me, listen good. You stay in his word. Every day in his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Jesus is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at the same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. Genesis 146, the first six chapters in God's Word. The world that was. Did you realize there was a world age before this one? Same old world, different age. The creation itself. When were the races created? You see, all the races were created separately, and you'll find that documented in these particular tapes. How, was the, what, how and what was the sin in the garden? It will be discussed in this series also. This is a must for the serious Bible scholar, for if you do not understand how it was in the beginning, you certainly will never understand the end. I think you will find this series very rewarding and certainly will answer questions that no doubt you've always wondered about. Genesis 146. Hey, I know you're going to enjoy this series.
Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. All right, good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Know what? We're going to do birth of an age. It's one of the parables that's probably least taught, and especially in this generation, when we are in that time, that season, that we know all things are supposed to come to pass. Well, certainly it's one that we should be abreast of. Birth 